If you're not using this to create your readme files for your GitHub projects, you might be missing out. What's going on, everyone? My name is James Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. I also have a podcast with my friend Amy Dutton called Compressed FM, which you should totally check out. But today we're going to talk about creating readme files and more importantly, how to make that as easy as possible on yourself. So Markdown is what the language, the templating, the markup language that we use to create uh, readme files. And when I first got started with Markdown, I was kind of intimidated. And I think like Markdown is really not all that complicated. It was just something I never used before. So learning some of the syntax, I felt a little weird about. Now I use it all the time, so I'm super comfortable with it. But if you want a, a Kickstarter, a Jumpstarter, a, uh, a push in the butt, I don't know what it is, like an easier way to create your Markdown files, I want to show you today readme so which is a product from katherine peterson i got to talk to her on stream about this recently that is uh super awesome so let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at it and i'll show you why it's so awesome and why you should check it out all right so i'm here on the readme so website uh this is on product hunt so you should definitely go and check this out on product hunt and give it an upvote like uh, i have already done when i'm logged in but give that an upvote on uh, product hunt if you enjoy the video to support her and the people behind this but if we go into the getting started tab here, uh, the easiest way to do this is just show you what's here. So you've got an editor in the middle, you've got a preview on the right, and then you've got uh, some different blocks and things that you can use uh, to kind of lay out your readme file. And they're pretty standard stuff that you would expect to see in readme. So uh, documentation, uh, environment variables, deployment, FAQs, uh, features, installation, all that kind of stuff, the stuff that you are probably pretty used to having to include yourself is there with some uh, general information. So if I said this is my uh, YouTube video, I'm writing Markdown in here in the editor, and then I get the full preview on the right. Now, one of the things that Catherine and the team did that's behind this is they uh, made sure that this preview over here looks like the, the way that github.com renders Markdown as well. So if you've ever worked with Markdown, and seen it rendered in different locations, you may have realized that different places or different, um, yeah, different places just render it differently. So this is meant to look like the way GitHub renders it. So you take this markdown from here, take it right to GitHub, it should look exactly like what you see as the preview. So this is my YouTube video. I'm creating a super cool video. Notice that updates in real time. This is also using the Monaco editor. Um, so Monaco is kind of the base, I think, of VS Code. So this is using Monaco, which is the base of VS Code in the browser, which is really neat. So if I wanted an FAQ section, I can click FAQ. Here's that section. Uh, I can see all the blocks that I have added to my readme, and I can edit them individually. So here's question one. Here is the, oh, if I could type here, is the answer to Q1. And here is the answer to Q2. Obviously fill this out with real information, but I've got a title, a uh, title and description. I've got a FAQ. I might wanna have a F API reference, which already gives you tables for these and they look great. This is exactly what I would expect with API documentation, uh, deployment information, environment variables, any of these things that you might want. And so after I have all these things set in here, um, I can drag and drop them around. If I click on the left hand part here, I can click and drag these around. I can delete a section if I want. Um, there's also a light mode, which is pretty sweet. There's also a reset button if I wanted to just start from scratch. And then lastly, I can see the raw markdown. So I could take this, I could copy this information um, inside of this file. I could take it right to GitHub. Let's see if I have a dummy project. I could, I guess I'll need to sign in. I'm in an incognito window, so let me do that. Oh, GitHub and their security. All right, so now I'm logged in. Uh, let's just pick uh, any random thing in here. I can pick my uh, Git chatbot. And if I go and edit this readme file, I'm gonna undo this here in a second, in the text, let me make sure I copy this whole thing. So there's a copy button here. I can copy all of that. And then I can paste it, the raw markdown into here. And let's go ahead and commit this to master. Uh, I will undo this here in a second, but here is exactly what we just saw. Notice the coloring and the highlighting uh, should look exactly like what the preview was that uh, is provided in the application. So all that stuff is there. Let me pause really a second to get rid of this information because it doesn't need to go in this repository. All right, so that is back to normal. Uh, just to kind of recap here, I would use README as a getting started 
or, or actually readme so for creating your entire readme file you've got the blocks on the left you can edit the information you can preview it at your light and dark mode which is pretty sweet you can also download the raw markdown file so there is the readme file that's downloaded uh support catherine if you can if you're able uh by following her on twitter uh and then buy her a coffee if that is in your budget as well because this tool is really cool it's something that she created that's free for the community uh you can use this obviously i think you should um and then support her if you can if at the very least give her a thank you on twitter and give an upvote on product hunt but readme so is pretty sweet all right so hopefully uh readme so and its benefits make sense uh give it a shot let me know in the comments when you do what you think about it and maybe some features you'd like to see added that we can pass on to catherine and then as we wrap up i want to do a community shout out you've already heard the name a couple of times but catherine peterson is the creator of readme so you can also find her on twitter i'll include a link to her twitter below so do that support her hope you enjoyed the video and i will catch you next time